Hello and welcome to the Titus Time Out podcast. I'm Jenny Abney Sivy, and today I'm going to cover part two of how to read a fan curve. A while back I did a podcast on what is a fan curve. It covered how to read a fan curve for fan powered VAV boxes. Reading a fan curve for selecting supply, return, or exhaust fan is basically the same, but it is a little bit different, so I want to cover that. If you recall from the What is a Fan Curve podcast, I showed that a fan curve looks like this, with static pressure on the bottom, CFM on the side, and two lines showing min-max range for the fan box. The fan curve is pretty simple for fan power terminal units because for any given size, you've got a set blower and motor combination. So for say this box, maybe this has a one third horsepower motor in it and you'll always just have that. And so this is always your fan range for this unit. So some fan box manufacturers and all supply return or exhaust fan data is shown with the axis flipped. So you'll have CFM on the bottom and static pressure going up the side. So let's say down here will be one, two, three, four, five. Let's say this is 1,000 CFM, and then static pressure 1 inch, 2 inch, 3 inch, and so on up the side. So let's draw a typical fan curve. This shows the relationship between CFM and static pressure. Up here at the top where the line intersects 0 CFM is 0% volume, or 0 WOV, wide open volume and down here is 100% WOV, or it's also called free delivery. So this is where you have no static pressure, how much CFM you'll get from your fan. In here, this little section that kind of dips down is called the stall region, or the region of instability. You don't want to select a fan in this range. This little dip shows that in this range, the fan curve is going to be unstable for you. Sometimes the dip is not as pronounced, but you still don't want to select past this section of the curve. We'll talk about stall and fan instability in a future podcast. Okay, next, let's draw in the system curve. The system curve shows how your system will operate based on the resistance of the system. If the system had more resistance, the curve may be over here, or if it had less, it may be over here. So back to our original system curve. Based on this fan static pressure curve and the system curve, the fan operation point would be where they intersect right here. So you can see that the same fan in a system with more resistance would have less airflow up over here, or more airflow if there was a lower resistance over here. So if your system has more pressure than you expected, your fan will provide less airflow. Okay, next let's draw in the brake horsepower curve. And put in some tick marks for the horsepowers. One horsepower, two, three, four, five. So for our forward curve fan, our brake horsepower may look something like this. To find the horsepower of the fan, draw from our operating point up to the brake horsepower line and then over to the brake horsepower scale. And let's call this 4.1 horsepower is what we need. So you could use a five horsepower fan or maybe you want to give yourself a little bit more room to play and go up to a seven and a half horsepower fan. It really depends on your application, but you always want to give yourself some room. You don't want to say if you had 4.9 horsepower on this curve, decide you could use a five horsepower fan for it. Okay, so that's what all the lines on a fan curve mean, and that's how to read them and determine your airflow and horsepower from a fan curve. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and thanks for taking a time out with us.